I can honestly hear the comments from thousands of miles in every single direction. How can a new Scooby-Doo show be the best of them all? New cartoons suck, right? Well, in most cases you'd absolutely be correct, but this show is definitely an anomaly. I consider this show to be the ultimate love letter to fans of all walks of the Scooby-Doo franchise. For starters, the town of Crystal Cove feels like a living and breathing place, populated by tons of characters that don't just disappear once an episode is finished. Nobody really feels forced in this show, and that is definitely a breath of fresh air for this franchise. The thing that mostly captivates me about the show is the overarching narrative that Mr. Incorporated tells throughout his 52 episode run. Every single episode of the show is important to the character's story in the town of Crystal Cove. There really aren't any throwaway episodes, minus an homage episode where they featured a ton of old Cartoon Network characters in Season 1, but it was pretty entertaining. The gang feels more lifelike than ever in this show, because they aren't fake people. They have genuine characteristics that realistically clash at some point in the show, which causes discord to the gang as a whole. Their relationships are much more mature than that of the old cartoon, which you can find to be a great new take on the show. Some people may find the whole dating thing annoying between the characters, but luckily it doesn't take up too much time in terms of the overall plot. Yes, there are many fights in the show about people, mostly Fred, being oblivious to his surroundings. And oh, have I mentioned Fred yet? Fred in the show has more personality and easily is one of the funniest characters next to Velma. Fred's hilarious obliviousness is so great in the show, and it makes for many, many great moments. Yeah, the show is pretty tongue-in-cheek at times, but hear me out on this one. I think the show works best with this comedy style and with an overarching dark vibe. You're probably wondering, how is it possible to achieve both of these things, especially in a kid's cartoon? You'd have to be mad to try to do this, right? Wrong. In this show, the comedy and the darkness blend so effortlessly and seamlessly that I can see the intense amount of work put into each and every line of the show. Most of the comedy is through characters saying many one-liners, which I find to be hilarious most of the time. Velma has so much sass in the show that I almost wish she would have been the spunky back in the original cartoon. Mystery Incorporated takes characters from the 1960s that initially didn't have much character at all, and evolves them into much more lifelike people that are very entertaining to watch. Don't get me wrong, I will always love the older episodes of Scooby-Doo, considering that I grew up with them at every stage of my life so far, but I have to realize how much talent and potential the show is being put into. I'm honestly so downright confused to why Cartoon Network decided to can this show when they leave other garbage shows up that are clearly only there to be easy and cheap ways of making kids watch more of the network. It seems really unfair to me that the show with more talent and skill put into each script is the one that gets canned and thrown out the window. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I'd rather rewatch Mystery Incorporated a thousand times over than watch Teen Titans Go. So you're probably wondering, wait, does this show end off on a cliffhanger that makes the entire show pointless to watch? My answer to that question would be no. This show has an overarching supernatural theme, which I find to be amazing and cool to think about. There is no cliffhanger episode that makes you question what happened to the town and its inhabitants. The show literally has a beginning and a defined end, which I am extremely grateful for. They could have very easily ended the show on a crazy cliffhanger to boost the ratings for a premiere, but they chose to write and direct the show professionally and realistically. The dark undertone of the show reminds me of Zombie Island mostly, which is easily one of my favorite Scooby-Doo movies of all time. Characters actually die in this show, mostly in the second season though. The point is, there are real consequences to what the gang does and doesn't do, ranging from some pretty dark crap to downright sad moments. In terms of the mystery, yes, some things are relatively easy to figure out if you pick up on the subtle clues posted throughout the episodes, but there is still a pretty great mystery that is rooted in real life folklore. The amount of references in the show is absolutely astounding too, because they are able to mix the comedic references and the dark tone together very nicely. Usually a show nowadays struggles to even complete one of these challenges, but this show does it so elegantly that it is hard to not notice the effort being put into the show. It's one of those shows that you can rewatch again and again to notice the little things that are presented or hinted at throughout a season of the show. For the love of god, in episode 2 there was a pretty big foreshadowing moment that arcs the last episode of the show, and I literally mean the final episode of the show. I don't want to go into detail on the clue, because I I don't want to spoil it for those of you that haven't seen it yet. This show is proof that you can have a mature cartoon that is designed for kids and adults alike. There are plenty of references and little haha -ha moments that can be funny for both audiences as they relate to real things in the real world, which I find to be particularly special nowadays for a cartoon. It really is a shame that Cartoon Network canned the show when they did because I was hoping for a lot more content in the show. That being said, the show is also the perfect length for a complete series. It's like the first season of Stranger Things, how people were scared to get a season 2 because season 1 was so monumentally epic that they were afraid that the writers would somehow ruin it. In my opinion, this show would have done better with more than two seasons, but it was definitely wrapped up in a great way, and I think it works perfectly as its uh, own entity with these two seasons. It honestly is kind of shocking to see the difference in quality between Mystery Incorporated and the next addition to the show, Be Cool Scooby-Doo. 
Remember, when I talk about the quality of Be Cool Scooby-Doo, please do not take that as a personal attack, and I don't want to sound like I know everything about cartoons, that my opinion is the be-all, end-all of everything. Because it's not. That's not the kind of person I am, nor is the communication that I want to portray to you guys. If you want a show that has darkness and comedy, and an overarching plot that has an epic mystery, then Mystery Incorporated is the show for you. I, for one, have always loved watching Scooby-Doo as a kid all the way through my adult life, when I'm 20 right now. So that gives me kind of an age gap where I've gone through loving Scooby-Doo this in, like for the last 20 years. I've watched shows like the original, the new Scooby-Doo movies, the new Scooby-Doo show, the Scooby and Scrappy show, what's the new Scooby-Doo, and many more. The only one at this point that I haven't actually seen is the 13 Ghosts spinoff, which I plan on getting around to eventually, but I haven't heard great things about it. Uh, that's not to say that's going to be bad, I've just heard kind of negative reviews overall. But I think what this show does is it brings past increments of these characters and flushes them out into a whole new light and a new world that they're in, and it makes every episode count, to be honest. This show reminds me of the darker DVD titles from back in the day such as Alien Invaders or Zombie Island, and stretches across two magical seasons of creepy supernatural happenings. Trust me, if you love a good Scooby-Doo mystery, comedy with a dark tone, then this is the show for you. The show is the exact opposite of Lazy in every regard. The characters evolve over time, which makes the show that much more enjoyable to watch because you don't actually feel like you're watching a show, you're watching characters, you're not watching something that's scripted. Well, obviously it is, but it doesn't feel like it's like, oh, let's go to point A to point B, oh wow, point A leads me to point C, you know, you know what I mean. Seriously, Cartoon Network, why did you cancel this marvel of modern cartoon? No, the show isn't for everyone out there, but I truly believe that this is one of the best shows that I've ever seen come out of Cartoon Network, and this is coming from a longtime fan of a lot of shows on that network. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of my opinions. I truly and honestly want to hear from every single one of you, because I believe that everybody's opinion matters, and should be heard to a certain degree. If you would like, I can make a follow-up video to the lore of the show, or even some sort of Q&A surrounding this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. And also, remember, I wasn't able to talk a lot about more of the show in depth because I didn't want to spoil it in this video. So if you actually want to hear more spoiler talk from me in the future, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to make a follow-up video. Anyways guys, sorry for the second intro. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Keep calm and trust your instincts and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace off.